so we're back in the hotel room after meeting up with the mafia family this is, i'm just trying to remember what i've been through went into that guy's room seems to be some kind of thing happening very soon but i'll leave that bit for now and oh did i sleep uh, yes i did all right so we'll just head up please let's let there be no cat in the way i don't want to deal with another cat Hey, no cat. Hi, madame. I hope you slept well. Like a baby. Thanks. Sarah passes the keycard to the conjurer. Seems the trail on Connor Freeman has gone cold. Any ideas? I could ask around around my mafia contacts more, but that route, that's really wasted favors. Besides, I have another lead. Cool, what do you have? Do you remember that poor deputy that was killed in Silver Creek Falls? Oh yeah, Deputy Hill. Poor kid. He was so young and so stupid at the same time. His landlady found a note for him, for him in her mail. I think this might open things up a bit. It's been a week since Deputy Hill was killed. Why did this not come up sooner? When she first got the note, she didn't realize it was for him. It was only later when she looked at it again did she work it out. I had her fax it to me. Check it out. The cipher that unlocks the message is on my carpet. L. Davis. Lee Davis must have left his list for him to find so he can decide for those crazy notes. I'm guessing your FBI crew grabbed them from the police station? The originals were stolen when Special Agent West was murdered, but I do have photocopies. So back to Silver Creek Falls? Yup. Oh, we're going back to Silver Creek Falls, brilliant. So yeah, it's been a little while- Oh, uh, sorry Sarah, I think I forgot I have to get this. Go for it. Hey boss, what's up? What? Um, yeah? Yeah, it's actually on our- what? It's actually on our way, no problem. What's up? That was my unit chief. Apparently there was another incident. In Silver Creek Falls? Not quite. About five miles away in a small fishing town called Wale Walai Head. How do you pronounce that? You said it was on our way? We need to take a small detour to get there, so chances are we won't have time to see anything in Silver Creek Falls today. Fair enough. Shall we get going? Yeah, so like I was saying, it's been a while since I've played this. I've been mainly playing um, Fran Bao, Close Your Eyes. Um, and I was thinking about going back to Color Symphony. I haven't done that in a while. So, um, yeah, so hopefully some color. I might be playing some Color Symphony later on and be uploading that as soon as I can. Um, but anyway, let's, let's go to Walleye Head. Walleye Head. Bertie County, North Carolina. Let's talk to this dude. Hi, Sheriff Majors. Oh my god, that that he's got evil eyes, he Um what kind of voice does he have? I'm guessing sinister but good, and I'm trying to think how I'm gonna do that. <clears throat> That's me. I'm guessing you're the FBI agents they sent to take a look at this. That's right, my name is Special Agent Bowders and this is Detective Sarah Fitzgerald. Sheriff? So what's going on here? Mighty strange case up here. Mighty strange indeed. I reckon you folks best take a look for yourself. Can you please give us some, us, uh, some background on what's going on? Certainly ma'am. Last night, a lady named Maddie Cobb called saying her husband and brother-in-law hadn't come home the previous night. The two brothers named Chester and Eddie both worked at this warehouse you see here. What was this warehouse for? I reckon best we mosey on in so I can explain things better. You're oh, oh. Here we go. I'll just go reread that again. 
I reckon the best way best we mosey on so I can explain things better. You all have pocket handkerchiefs on you. I'll tell you, it smells like dead farmer in there. Lead the way. Look at all that blood everywhere. This might even be worse than the sorority house in Silver Creek Floor. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So much blood. The blood samples. Oh, yeah. Now, you all need to understand that the they go and clean fish here, so perhaps some of the blood could be fish blood. Thanks. Shall we get to work? Oh, yay. Blood sample. Gee, this place really stinks. When I got a call from Mrs. Colbert, I reckon the first place I'd find Chester and Eddie would be the warehouse, since this is where they work. Ugh, it smells really bad. To answer your earlier question, this warehouse is where they pack frozen fish for the Swatch Fishing Corporation. That explains the smell. Goes to show you what you know about fishing, boy. Fresh fish doesn't smell, nor does frozen fish. When I got here, not only did I find boxes of fish outside the freezer room, but this darned mess of blood and guts everywhere too. Any bodies? Negative. Just blood everywhere. And this darn mess of fish left outside. What did you do next? Now, I heard something mighty similar went down in Silver Creek's Falls, so I sent my report to the Chief of Police in um, Charlotte. In turn, he passed it on to the Commissioner. Next thing I know, you F FBI are involved. If you have any more questions, I'll be here. So, are you closing the case here? I'm keeping a sharp eye out. But it's literally there, but there is little else I can really do. There are no bodies, so I do have reason to believe the Cole brothers could still be alive. On the however hand, there is a lot of blood here. Oh, it's my favorite hobby, collecting blood sample. <laughs> Why is there a mattress here? There was another man who worked here. We knew him as Old Clyde. He slept here at night too. He was homeless. Was he also reported as missing? Old Clyde ain't got no family. The only people who knew him were Chester and Eddie. Heck, I don't even know if Clyde is his real name. You seem to know a few things about him. When you're the sheriff of a town out of 600 people, then there really is no one you know. There's really no one you know nothing about. Hmm, this one's out of place. It looks like an arctic char. You seem to know your fish, sheriff. Everyone around here knows their fish. It's a fishing town, but this arctic char really doesn't belong. How are you so sure it's an arctic char? My brother lives in Newfoundland and I go up north to go fishing with him and I, when I get the chance that there when I get the chance that there is an arctic char. Now whatever the hell it's doing down here is a mystery to me. Whoa there's a goat head in the sink? What? It really reeks. It's been in there for a while. It's so gross. It still has has the horns and hair and horns on it. Any sign of the rest of the goat? Nope, just the head. That's really weird. Nobody raises goats around here. I wonder where they got it from. There's more. A bottle of blood and some candles. There, there'll be devil. There'll be the devil to pay. Something unholy happened here. There were always rumours that the Cabot brothers weren't alright in the head, but this? Let's not speculate anything yet. Sheriff, please, add all this to the pile of evidence. That was weird. Ooh! What was that? Did you see that? I saw something in the corner of my eye. There was shirt too. Must have been from the, store air, the stored air pressure in the freezer room. Still doesn't explain that thing I saw. That scared me, man! from the fish, but the blood. Wait, is that a... No, it can't be. It is! What is it? 
down. Now a bit of food. Here I have, I have here I have a plastic bag. Whoa. What the hell happened here? It looks fresh. Looks like the meat is still reddish. Thank you, Sheriff. Let's have that center of forensics in Durham. Yes, ma'am. Right. That's clearly We should probably take a look around back quickly. It was probably just the wind from the generators. I know what I saw, I think. Actually, now that I remember it, also Clyde did have one other friend. Really? Who? A Native American man named Eric Johnson. You see, when old Clyde appeared here in Walleye Head, most of the town folks were none too pleased and didn't receive him very well. Eric knowing a thing or two about being disfranchised, was very kind to Clyde. He'd give Clyde a job at his convenience at his convenience store and even let him stay at his house. So what happened? When the tornado hit two years ago, poor Eric lost his convenience store and house. Seeing it as a sign, he gave old, old Clyde half of his saving and left Walleye Head. What, what a generous man. If you believe in karma, you'll like this story. He moved to Oklahoma and ended up making it big there. That's awesome, what's business? I understand this may sound like a cliche, but he owns a casino there. Of course. You could try to track him down to ask him some questions, but I don't think the two of them were in touch. If you're trying to look for him, you won't find him looking for Eric Johnson. He, go he now goes by Golden Hawk. That's also the name of his casino. Thanks for all your help, Sheriff. My pleasure, son. Wait, are you considering going to Oklahoma to follow his lead? Seems like a bit of a weak lead, so probably not. Besides, we really should get back to the case in Silver Creek, Creek Falls. Do you think this case is related? Most likely. So, we done here? That'll be all, Sheriff. You have all the evidence and samples. Sarah hands the shelf, all the blood samples and everything. Last time we hand all the evidence over, that person got killed, so let's hope this sheriff doesn't get killed. Yep. We need to continue on to Silver Creek Falls, but I'll type up a report and maybe someone from DC might come down to take a look later. I wanna see if I wanna see if we can get round to the back, because I'm a bit curious of what that was. Okay. Ooh. That's odd. More soft animal hairs. Looks like someone cut through the fence. Whoever did this whoever did this did a really messy job of it. So these must be the generators or something? Looks like there's nothing else around here that I can't see at the moment. It's a bit weird. Hmm. Well, I was stopped on my track for some reason. Hmm, weird. All right. I'll quickly give the shelf the hairs. 